What's up guys, we're back again with quite possibly my favorite person in the world. Conan O'Brien was on the Late Late Show last night. So I had to react to this one guys. Irish Homecoming. He did a DNA test, I watched the video and he was 100% Irish. Which is actually wild because he's been, I think his parents have been there since 1870, something like that. I remember hearing him talk about that. So a long time guys, at least a few generations. So you know what I mean, they kept the Irish blood, I don't know, somehow, but... Pretty funny, guys. This one should be incredible. Make sure to drop a comment down below. Yeah, Conan O'Brien, my favorite person of all time. Hopefully, we get a few laughs out of this. One thing I noticed about the Late Late Show, they don't have any comments. It's kind of a bit sad, guys. I don't know why, but hell, let's make this the channel that you guys comment on for that channel. Let's get it. They are here tonight to welcome home our first guest in a manner befitting the legend of comedy and wandering son of Aaron. That he is, with his translucent skin and his... Blood red hair, he is a man who has taken that affliction and he has turned it into a superpower, changing the world of American late night television, one primetime Emmy at a time. And tonight, he returns to walk amongst us in the flesh and bless us with his presence, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> from Los I mean, he is the biggest talk show host of all time. There's nobody even comes close, you know. Los Angeles via New York, and Garvin and Cork, would you please welcome Conan O'Brien. <laughs> Legendary. Oh, That's class. Please sit. Please, please sit. Thank you. Thank you. They never stood, so they I never do that. Stood. Yeah. <laughs> There's no camera on them, so the people at home think I, they stood for me. It's fine. It's all good. Please sit. Thank you. Uh, you have no idea how delighted I am that you're here. I am now officially the second palest Irish talk show host in the room. <laughs> this is good news. This is good news. You can see my veins in my face. <laughs> yeah, it's horrifying. You can. It's, uh, we're, pretty, we're pretty close there on that one. On the old palette Very screen. nice. No, you look a lot better than I do. Yeah. Uh, and congratulations uh, on the show. I think you're killing it. You're doing a great job. Seriously. Very talented. Thank you. You're great. Um, thank you very much. And look, all I'm, I did was watch clips of you all week, <laughs> and I was filled with jealousy and rage. So <laughs> you're doing your job. I mean, that, that's kind of how I feel when I watch them too. <laughs> it's, it, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, where does this homecoming sit for you? Because for me, I'm getting, I'm getting 63. You know, visit a President Kennedy, sort yep. of the, yeah. you know, the the final scene in Finding Nemo. How does it feel to be back with, with your people? <laughs> you mean, do I feel like an animated fish? Yes. No, no I don't. Uh, I have to say, it's been lovely. I mean, the people in this country are fantastic. They are so funny. They're so welcoming. Uh, they've been great. And uh, so I've been here for about a week, maybe about 11 days. And I've been shooting for a show we're doing for HBO Max where I reach out. That's, cra that's crazy. How he gets these deals to get like HBO is just wild, man. HBO is like the biggest, that's like the biggest. If you're on HBO, that's the biggest. There's no bigger like. Out And I uh, contact some fans from around the world. And then um, it's just an excuse to get into that country. We're going to do four of them. They're going to be on in the spring. It's going to be called Conan O'Brien Must Go. And uh, we're going to have Ireland be one of them, and I think it's one of my favorites. It's fantastic. So uh, you, you've, you've taken in some of our some of our greatest monuments while while you've been here. I Conan. did. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about your visit to Barack Obama Plaza. I visited <laughs> what I think is the greatest tribute to any American president, <laughs> and I've seen them all. Is Barack Obama Plaza? It's not often you can, you know, pay homage to a bronze statue of a president and a first lady and then get a pretty decent sandwich at the same time. <laughs> Dude, Conan's the only naturally funny guy. He's so funny, bro. And so we visited that, uh, that place and it was, people said, you have to go. So I went and I loved it. And they named, I was there first and then they paid me a great honor. A big honor. A big honor. Check it out. They named an air hose after me. This is real. <laughs> The Conan O'Brien air pump. 
that's really there, and you can, and I get a piece of the money because it costs. So yeah. Okay, so you're on a slice. This is. Good. I get fifteen percent. You get back end. I get back end. This, yeah. this is how Hollywood works. I'm no idiot. We negotiated this ahead of time. Uh, you also, I believe, uh, had a little visit to uh, Ross Naroon. I went to Ross Naroon. I was invited to Ross Naroon. Very excited because uh, it's uh, an Irish-speaking. Uh, soap opera. It's been going for a really long, I think like 28 years. It's been going like for that. a while. And uh, I went and I thought, I can do this. This will be all right. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done because they put the language up phonetically for me. I don't speak Irish. Yes. I don't know how many people here speak Irish, but it's a very, it's very, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zero, like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, you're doing a great job keeping that language alive. <laughs> Uh, Dude, that's gas. That's gas. Yeah, that's true, guys. We gotta speak more Irish, honestly. Jesus. Cut us a tattoo, bruh. Cut us a tattoo. Tommy, come on. Uh, they all speak it fluently, and it's amazing, but um, they so, put so, up... so if it wasn't phonetically, do you think you could. You could... Uh, no way. No? no way. They take a bunch of consonants, put them in a blender, and throw them out. And so I was looking at it. I didn't think I could do it. The cast was very helpful. They helped me write them out phonetically. But I might have, might as well have been an animal that they put peanut butter on its lips. I just did what I was told, uh, and they got me through it. And I think it's going to be a great episode. Uh, we actually have a few people uh, in in the audience here with some some Irish names that we'd like you to have a go at now that you've been here for, for a week. So sure. who have we got? We've got uh, this this lady here. Do oh, want... sure, that's a common name in the states as well. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's... my favorite rapper. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this name, bro. This name. Great, nice name, but it's always so to blonnet. Blonnet, that's why I always said it. <laughs> Is that Black Ned? I mean, that, that, that's. Black Ned? That, that's pretty close. That, that, that's blonnet. Pretty, pretty close. Blonnet, yeah. It doesn't look anything like blonnet. <laughs> Bla Is it blonnet? Is that your name, blonnet? Blonnet, it's a lovely name. I'm uh, sorry I butchered it. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, why is there a T in there? Why not just blonnet? And translates directly to Florence in English. Very nice. Florence. And now it makes sense, Conan. <laughs> I'm going to call you Sally. <laughs> Lovely to meet you, Sally. No more of that blonded stuff, okay? Uh, oh, what have we got yeah, next here? We've got... Uh, oh, for God's sake. Yeah. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty simple... Uh, let me see the... Oh. Kelvin? No. Oh, this is really embarrassing, guys. Seeing as I lived in Ireland my whole life, um, when they say it, I'll be able to say it. Oh my god, this is actually really. This is actually. I'm gonna probably edit this out because this is pretty embarrassing. Kaylin, Quaylin, simple one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sialon. Slyon! 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 Can you help him out? Slyon! It's Keelan. Keelan. What's that? Keelan. Keelan. There you go. How what? It? No, it's. I've actually never heard that name in Ireland before, ever, in my whole life living here. Qu Qu Quaylan. I've never heard that name before. Does that become Keelan? <laughs> what magic act do you have to do to get that to be Keelan? <laughs> it's beautiful. I love your name, Keelan. No, mm. no, but I think the spelling's a little bit. Yeah. But I love it, and clearly, wow. Wonder, wonder why that language went away. <laughs> oh, bro, he's just roasted, bro. Uh, bro. Conan, uh, uh, so many Americans come over here and, and they pretend to be Irish. Yeah. You, you are 100%, you've, you've done a... I did a DNA test a couple of years ago, and the doctor uh, said, <laughs> I've got interesting news for you, he said you're 100% Irish. And my people came over in the 1870s, Jeez. moved to central Massachusetts, and just lived in a very small town. Jeez. So I said, is this good news that I'm 100%? And he said, I don't know. I think you're inbred. I mean, I think this is, <laughs> that's a lot. 100% is a lot. And it explains a lot, I think, because... <laughs> I have, uh, you know, I'm a strange fellow, I think, uh, fellow. and so maybe, but it, I've come here. I've it's actually gas, like the way people always say in Ireland, they're like, oh, Jesus, you know, your man's not Irish, like the American, he always says he's Irish, ah, stupid Americans, but like, some Americans are like 100% Irish, shit, genetically, I'm not even 100% Irish, I, I'm only 50% genetically, and I haven't done the test yet, Ch I'm like Czech Irish, 
you know, Czechoslovakian Irish, actually, because my granddad is Czech, my mom is Slo So, like, it's all, I don't know, I'm there a European somewhere, but I'm also 50% Irish, but, like, he's a hot, I mean, look, look at this dude. This dude, I, looks like the epitome of a Celtic guy. And they say that he's not Irish. Like, come on, guys. This is just stupidity. Like, people have told me that here in in Dublin uh, and, in, and across Ireland that I can meet people who live here, and there's, there's a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of French. Mm. Yeah. But I'm still 100 percent after all this time. Uh, that's I, I, actually incredible. Guys. Like, that's it's only like I said after 1870. That's like hundreds of years, or hundred years, a little bit longer. Like, wild. I just love the fact that that. A man who looks like you can look in the mirror and, and think that you need to test that you're a hundred percent Irish. <laughs> uh, I mean, did you send away? A, you know, was it a a swab or blood or, or just a selfie? What? What? I came fifteen thousand miles to be treated this way. Uh, it's really funny, but uh, the I had a suspicion, but I didn't think. I mean, uh, who knew? But yes, they probably could have just looked at me and said, <laughs> and, you're a hundred percent. There's but, nothing, you know, yeah. I mean, I can't tan. I catch fire when I go to the beach. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I shouldn't be living. The doctor basically said you should not be living in Southern California. <laughs> Southern I Cal should get back here. And the minute I got back here, I felt so terrific. I loved it. I really do. And I'm in Los Angeles and it rains just a little bit, which it does once every 15 years. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. I love it. And other people are depressed. And I say, I want low clouds. I want it to be chilly. I love all that. I want to start a little peat fire. No one knows what I'm talking about uh, no. in Los Angeles, but I would love that. Uh, a peat fire, a bush fire over there. That's the kind exactly. of Exactly. They don't be. encourage that. No. No, they don't. Uh, you were over here uh, this time around. You, you find a little bit more about your family story. Yeah, we did. Uh, I've always heard that we were. My father talked a lot about Dungarvan, Waterford. We wanted to go right back to the O'Brien line all the way, and we found out that we're from Galbali, or in, Galbali. Help me out here. Galbali? Galbali. It's Limerick. a tiny, in Limerick, tiny town. Oh, in Limerick, that's class. Before I bring it up, they've never heard of it. <laughs> I was maybe 700 meters from Galbali, and they hadn't heard of it. Uh, it's a, <laughs> in it Galbali. Is, yeah, in Galbali. They don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but we found out that that's where Thomas O'Brien, my father's name is Thomas, that's where Thomas O'Brien, whose father was Jeremiah, he was working a very small plot of land and he left around 1871. That's like so incredible how they can trace that. That's just like, bro, this guy should be like president in Ireland. <laughs> well, not president now. Let's, let's relax here. Now, hold on a second now. But I'm talking about he should be like really revered here. He's a great, great Irish guy. I just call him a legend and he's so funny, dude. So we worked with a genealogist who found the plot of land That's crazy. that my people were living on. That is crazy. And it is that is flipping crazy, guys. Unbelievably crazy. It's kind of emotional when you do that. It looks right at the Galti Mountains, and uh, it's a little emotional to be yeah, honest. You can tell he's kind of getting emotional. Like it is, guys, because you know he kind of probably left because of the famine, or no? What well, that was eighteen seventy. Probably left because he was just poor as hell. It was crazy. That's with you. It's you. You do feel something. Mm. And then someone told me to get off my land. <laughs> so the emotion went away. It was very short-lived. He shot at me. He had a gun, which I'm accustomed to. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a search that's been going on for a while because, I mean, you know, one of your first trips here to Ireland, uh, you, mm -hmm. uh, you find O'Brien Castle. We've got a little clip of this. Oh, that was fun. This yeah. was uh, this is a, a former. I can't believe I made it. This is O'Brien Castle. This is my castle. It's up here on the cliffs of Mar. <laughs> I have no idea why my ancestors abandoned it. <laughs> it must have been idiots. It's beautiful. Who would leave this place? They had. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's at the top of the cliffs. I'm over. Like you, you can I overlook the, the other side of the cliffs. Oh, it's class. That's, that's we place. aired. <clears throat> when we aired that clip, people in, 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 the show was in New York. Then people thought, well, you got a wind machine. And I said, no, we didn't get a wind machine. We didn't even go there with any idea of what the comedy would be. The comedy took care of itself. And I love people in the background clinging to the earth as if they could be swept away at any moment. Uh, yeah. Because they could. Yeah. Because they could. Uh, you know, so many people, uh, they love you, they admire you for... You, went, you said love and then you quickly moved to admire. <laughs> now you're going to go to tolerate very quickly. <laughs> So many people tolerate you <laughs> as a performer, Conan, uh, for yeah. your, uh, I mean, 
you've basically completed all of show business. I mean, you know, you wrote on Saturday Night Live, you wrote on The Simpsons, you wrote mm -hmm. that iconic uh, monorail sketch, you had your, yeah, bit of love for that. There we go. Chelsea's in the house. Thank you. Um, you know, you had your own talk show, you took over for The Tonight talk show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me taking over this show, yeah. Uh, growing up as a kid and watching Gay Burn, that was a big deal, taking this over for you. Taking over that show with yeah. Johnny Carson must have sure. been a, a similar thing. Yeah, one of the first people, I mean, I don't know how well he's known uh, here, uh, but Johnny Carson, uh, very much a, a Gay Burn figure, someone who started doing it in about 1962, which I'm guessing Gay Burn was around the in same time. In and around the same time, yeah. And um, Jeez, That's crazy. So, yeah, I, didn't know, I don't know about American talk show hosts. I don't really... Yeah. And back then, this is pre-internet, Johnny Carson was the biggest performer in the United States, but he used to talk about this. He'd go to Europe. I mean, he couldn't go anywhere in the U.S. He was the most famous person in America. But when he left and he traveled, people didn't know who he was. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's the way television used to work. Now it's very different mm -hmm. because people, I mean, when I walk around, people for the good and ill, know my work uh, through the internet. So it's a very different and, world. And through the podcast as well. And the podcast, yeah. So uh, that's, that's, it's quite different, but I did get to meet Gay Byrne and uh, that was really special. It was great to get to meet him a bunch of years ago at the Ambassador's Residence, American Ambassador's Residence in Phoenix Park. That was great. Um, you talked about the podcast there. One of my favorite episodes recently was with yourself and President Biden. Yeah. Uh, how big a deal was that for you as an Irish American? Huge. Going to the White House, interviewing a sitting Irish American person. Well, I go and I, I uh, President Biden agreed to do the podcast, so I, I went. And he <clears throat> very much wanted to talk almost exclusively about his Irish heritage. <laughs> There, and he walked in, I know he was here recently, he walked into the room with a big book of clippings of his Ireland trip huh. and brought them in and presented them to me. And that's what we talked about before we even went on the air. And I will say this, guys, before anybody starts hating on, on Irish Americans, man, I love the fact that they are so passionate about their origins and where they came from. Because I love that, guys. It's, that's actually, I love that a lot, guys. People need to know where they came from and, and, and love that, guys. You know what I mean? You should love where you came from. Don't be embarrassed or, you know, saying people, oh, you're this or that. Don't be. So it's, a, it's obviously really resonates with him. It's very important to him. Yeah. We had the interview. We talked a lot about being Irish Americans and what it means to us. And then when it was over, he said, Conan, do you want to see the Oval Office? The answer to that is yes. Uh, so I went, it's a huge deal, I'd never seen it before. I've performed for presidents many times, but I'd, and I've been in the White House, I'd never seen the Oval Office, and he brought me in, and there's the Resolute Desk. Slightly more impressive than this one, but close. Hey, come on. No, no, I'm saying close, very close. And that's the desk that John F. Kennedy had. Damn. That's the desk that John John's peeking out of. And I practically started hyperventilating because I grew up in Brookline, Massachusetts, uh, John F. Kennedy's president when I'm born. My grandmother always impressed on me. He changed everything for us in this country. Every yeah, John, John F. Kennedy, I, until that time, I think Irish people in America weren't really loved like that. And then they just blew up loved because John F. Kennedy. And my dad actually got to see John F. Kennedy in Galway back year. And my dad's like kind of older now, but literally he got to see John F. Kennedy give a speech in Air, Air Square in Galway. If anybody knows Galway, I don't know who's going to be watching this video. But yeah, unbelievable, guys. Everything in one fell swoop. So I walk in, and the first, I just said, oh my God, Mr. President, is this the Resolute Desk? And he said, sit behind it. And I kind of froze and said, I can't do that. And he said, sit down! <laughs> Which I thought was obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> and I sat, and we got a picture of me sitting with him. He, he's standing behind me with, my, with his hand on my shoulder, and I'm sitting at the Resolute Desk, and I, my biggest thought was, I wish my grandmother could see this. Wow. Um, yeah. She's still with us, but she's not a fan. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's just that, cheap. That, that, that's, that's, that's just that, cheap, but you know what? It worked and it got us past me butchering these lovely Irish names. And I, I it, you know, it made up for everything in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that story was worth it just just to get just to get just, just yeah. to get in that yeah. um, I know you're a big fan of uh, of our musicians here tonight. Yeah, I, mean, I have to say, I've uh, been listening to the music. I've been listening to a lot of traditional music, um, hanging out in uh, in in pubs 
uh, went to Whelan's and got to perform with the Irish tenors, which was uh, a dream come true. And what I love about this country, one of the things I admire most about it is the way people support the, their own culture, because no one comes close to beating us in the arts, I think. I think the Irish people have the greatest literature, amazing, just the poetry, uh, yeah. the play. W, uh, William Butler Yeats, all these guys. Seamus Heaney. Writing, uh, and, and now acting, dominating acting. It's uh, absolutely uh, incredible, worldwide, uh, yeah. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it, um, uh, Barry Keown won a, oh, he won a Grammy or something like that, Grammy? Something like that, or uh, one of those awards, anyway. It kind of comes so naturally to, to Irish people, and so, you know, our musicians were wondering, you know, it, would you maybe perhaps, before you go, give us... I a, don't want to go. I mean... <laughs> I intend to stay here for like six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, miss, be, I, I miss having a good audience, and so uh, I have arranged. no intention of leaving, yeah. <laughs> that could be arranged. Uh, we were wondering, would it be possible uh, for you to give us a... A, a little tune. I'll try. I'm a comedian, not a singer, but I'll give yeah. it a shot, and I'm sure these people will be very forgiving. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Has a young boy in Killarney <laughs> so many years ago <laughs> me mum would sing a lullaby in tune, so sweet and low, so sweet and low. To a loo, a loo, 